All right. I'm good. Hey, uh, it's time for Go Talk at the Congress. <laughs> uh, today I have Lucas with me. Hey, Lucas. Hello. And that was Andrew Jackson. Do I look at you or at the camera? It was just look at each other. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, Lucas worked with uh, DeepMind, and we're just going to talk a DeepMind, right? Deep or AlphaGo? It's which one is it? AlphaGo is made by DeepMind, so mm -hmm. it's yeah, AlphaGo is part of DeepMind. Okay, so it's like the umbrella. Yeah. Cool. Uh, we're, so we're going to talk a little bit about you know getting into AlphaGo and how he got into it, and uh, DeepMind, and just uh, anything else that I don't know sparks my fancy. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry about it. It's really relaxed. Um, Let's start with uh, just playing Go. Uh, yep. Down, did you start Go because of DeepMind or? Uh, definitely not. No, I, I started Go an embarrassingly long time ago. Um, when I was 15, I was studying Japanese in high school, and uh -huh. I found a Go board in the Japanese bookstore. Oh, cool. And then you just, from there, you just played in your local clubs and just... Yeah, yeah. It took me six months to find a club, and then I figured out I was 17Q. <laughs> And then, uh, so then they're on, and I'm guessing you worked at Google first, and then you went to DeepMind, or did you actually work for... uh, I worked at Google first, so I joined Google in Switzerland back in 2014, uh -huh. and I worked there for about a year, and then I transferred in um, at, at the end of 2015 to DeepMind. Cool. And was that, did you know what you were getting into, or... That was mainly the reason, like, I, uh, I hounded DeepMind for a while knowing that AlphaGo was afoot. <laughs> Wow, okay, cool, cool. So it wasn't like someone just said, hey, I saw your resume, you played Go. Like, would no, you, would, no. Would, oh, it, cool. it turned out to be useful later, uh -huh. but uh, I actually was um, hired as a, a, an engineer on the evaluation team, mm -hmm. so basically building the test platforms for the artificial intelligent agents, and uh, I started getting in, into more of the AlphaGo stuff over time. Oh, cool, cool, cool. And so... Yeah, that must have been... So when you heard about it, you were just like, I gotta be on this project, and you just hounded and tried. So that was really cool. Um, so f I guess that you answered my second question, was basically, uh, from a very high-level like perspective, what were you doing, and you're just writing like, how to test it? Well, uh, so for the work I've done on AlphaGo, that's mainly consisted of selecting... Well, essentially making sure it performs as well as possible. So it's selecting different positions to ensure it performs correctly on all of them. Cool. And uh, also trying to introspect into what it's thinking, its search process. Oh, cool. So you can think like a computer now. Well, <laughs> I can try to think like a hybrid between a person and AlphaGo's search tree. Oh, cool, cool, cool. cool. And then, um, so yeah, without getting too much of it, and then you saw just how well it could play, and then you saw... Were yeah, you... of course. By the time uh, I got to DeepMind, AlphaGo was already leagues better than me. And in fact, uh, by that time, it had already beaten Fanhui. Oh, you got in after the Fanhui. Right, so I got in between Fanhui and Lee Sedol. Oh, cool. Nice, nice. And so that, wow, you... it's pretty recent then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was, uh, yeah, I joined at the end of 2015. Oh, nice. Um, so let's talk about, a little bit about, I guess, uh, the whole Lee Se Dol matches. I think you said when we talked a little bit earlier, you said you did. Uh, well, <laughs> sorry, you just have to refresh my mind. What did you do during during the matches? During the matches, I uh, gave the commentary at DeepMind. And so, what, what, like, you were explaining the games for the people at, at the right. So basically, everybody else with Go knowledge was in Korea, mm -hmm. and so. For the people back in London, uh, we all showed up at 4 a.m. to the office. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, I, I got to talk through the games, and I was much aided by the fact that I had AlphaGo's value graphs. So oh, I cool. could tell what it was thinking, and I could pretend like I knew all the explanations to the moves. That's cool. And I think uh, you talked about it once, where if you wanted to figure out what AlphaGo was thinking, you'd have to go through, I think, logs. And it would... Yeah, yeah. So... There's um, some extra information that you can find in the logs as to what its uh, main lines are. Mm -hmm. But for an overview of the game, you can just look at the value graph, uh, just like the value graphs that were presented in right. the presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool, cool. And you can just feel how, you know, get a basic idea of how confident it is. And yeah, so you can basically see what, um, what level of confidence it has in the game. Mm -hmm. the, the win rate is not an exact mirror of its percentage chance of winning the game, but it gives a good indication. Oh, cool. cool. And what was the general uh, attitude of 
people during during the matches when they were watching? Was it sort of like a like as they kept winning and winning? Was it just like oh we've we stumbled onto something much bigger well, than we we we've, we've anticipated? I think the the moment that DeepMind realized it had stumbled onto something really big was when we beat Fanpai. Oh really? And then, like, Lisa Dole was more, like, solidifying. Right. Well, Lisa Dole and Fan Hui are both uh, incredibly large milestones as far as Computer Go is concerned. Mm -hmm. But uh, before, well, before the development of the policy net and the value net that mm -hmm. make AlphaGo so strong, the best computer players could give, or could take at least three stones from a professional. Right. So three stones versus zero stones. Right is already a huge, huge change when you're at that high level. Right. And uh, from Fan Hui to Lee Sedol is another large leap. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it was, uh, it was apparent that something big was going on from the moment that, Fan Hui, uh, that the Fan Hui match happened. Cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is, I mean, I think at the European Go Congress, they said uh, uh, there was like a Cho Hei Yon match against, like, against, Crazy Stone. Uh, wait, uh, yeah, yeah. Or, I think, like, yeah. Against and Zen? Or? It might have been Zen, but it was like a handicap game, and I think it beat him, but it was like certain stones. Two stones. Yeah, and like... Wait, there at, was the, at the EGC just a couple days ago, yeah. right? Yeah, I think it was Cho on Zen, and two stones, Cho on uh, lost by 1.5. Wow. And like, the, the crazy thing is, I saw one of the comments, it's like, you know, a couple months ago, that would have been the biggest deal ever, and then now it's just... It, it's, it's crazy, like, the door that's been opened. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you was uh, Fan Hui, was it Fan Hui or Aja who said that when he started doing the DeepMind thing, he actually had to teach some of them how to play Go. Is that? That's probably Aja. Okay, Aja. And uh, so how many of them, is, do a lot of people play Go there or is it, are they mostly still focused on like more, just uh, More people know basically how to play Go these okay. days. There are only a few people who are down level players. I see. But, uh, yeah, this uh, the the Don level players have a relatively valuable store of knowledge. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, so let's let's move on from that. Um, I mean, there's some really interesting things. Uh, I'm, I think, uh, I just famous two <laughs> two two word response was under discussion. So I'll, I'll let him figure out things and uh, talk about that. But um, let's say, how do you feel about all of this? I'm, the one thing I talked with uh, Anders once about this was he mm -hmm. he viewed it as sort of like an inevitability uh, he said you mean the computers would, would win be, someday yeah and he said you know we get better at writing code you get better at this and that um, considering that you're just with DeepMind how do you feel about what you've seen and like how it's progressed well I was very heartened by the fact that computers could progress so fast like that AI could take this huge leap that wasn't expected for 10 years right and it was a bit of a bittersweet moment as a Go player mm -hmm. to see Lisa Dole fall to a computer. Right. But then again, it's also the opportunity for collaboration, essentially, between humans and AI and better understanding Go. Right. And I think uh, the one thing that's, that happened was uh, Aja talked about how he's going to release uh, a few AlphaGo versus AlphaGo games. And mm -hmm. then I think, did he say the fan play and the, like, how, how AlphaGo saw it? Right, so uh, Fan Hui, uh, Gu Li, and Zhou Ryang mm -hmm. all went through the games, mm -hmm. and they also had access to some of AlphaGo's logs. Cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, that, I think that's awesome and really valuable because um, when I talked with Haley about it, uh, Ha Jin Li, she said, you know, uh, one of the things that's interesting is that what AlphaGo thinks is good for AlphaGo might, not, might be different than how a human thinks, and, it's, and right, if we don't well, get to see into that, it's interesting because while AlphaGo is extremely strong, mm -hmm. there's still room for a human professional to come in and say, well, this is actually just a terrible exchange. AlphaGo only makes it because, I don't know, the game is already over or something. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about? How's your Go Congress been? <laughs> well, I haven't, uh, I have, I'm one and one. Okay. <laughs> I haven't great. won the five Don section yet. <laughs> Is this your first Go Congress? No, not by a long shot. I've been to uh, several Go Congresses, starting in 2008 with Portland. Oh, nice, nice, nice. And uh, what do you like about the Go Congress? Well, the Go Congress is basically where everybody can 
congregate around Go. Yeah. So it's, uh, it, Go is a particular obsession for most people who play it enthusiastically. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to have a large group of people to whom you don't have to explain why you play so much of this weird game. Exactly. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, it's a great just to look around and just see it happen and then no one's like, oh, what is this game? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we all know what it is. Is it Othello? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. I'm not completely prepared, I apologize. Uh, this is some amusing dead space. Let me think of a funny story or something. I can't think of one. <laughs> I think I think that's uh, mostly what I want to talk with you about. Just uh, you know how you, how you've seen it, uh, Deep Mind. I think going forward, uh, there are so many things under discussion. Uh, yeah. What What are some things you would you think would be cool to see? Uh, be it from computer Go or well, humans I hope embracing what comes from strong computer Go in general, uh -huh. uh, not only AlphaGo but any computer Go engine, is that eventually people can learn from it. Right. Because the the best thing to a Go player mm -hmm. is not just seeing the advancement in the state of AI. That's an interesting scientific discussion. Mm -hmm. But what a Go player wants is to know the best moves. Right. <laughs> That's true. And I, yeah, I mean, that, the, the funny thing was uh, in, in the discussion that I think Aja showed, like, there was the move that it played famously in game two, mm -hmm. but then it showed everything else it, it contemplated before going to that move. So, yeah. So I and think that's pretty so cool. So it's nice to see, for example, if you, if you could have access to AlphaGo at a certain moment in a game, you could see here are all the traditional things that it considers, mm -hmm. but here is the interesting new move or style that it suggests. And maybe this is completely against conventional wisdom, but it's powerful nonetheless. Mm. That would be really interesting if actually Computer Go and AlphaGo allowed people to think more freely about Go. Yeah, and that was the thing even Fan Hui said, is just after he played that he realized there are no limitations. Yeah, <laughs> whatever goes. <laughs> yeah. That's actually funny, one of the, uh, in the pros was teaching a kid uh, earlier, and the kid was just like, "Oh, after I seen AlphaGo, I'm just feel like doing whatever I want." And the pro was like, <laughs> "Yes, but no. <laughs> you still need to understand." The one-one point is still wrong most of the time, <laughs> yes, pretty much. Um, well, thank you, thank you again, Lucas, for doing this with me. Thank um, you. Uh, hope to see more. I think if people are really interested in more in Deep Mind, I think does the website still offer a lot of information, and is that yep. probably much where we can go to get, yeah. get more information? Uh, if you want more information about DeepMind than uh, the website, and of course, uh, DeepMind gives most information to the people who apply. Oh, cool. Nice. Well, thank you very much, and uh, thanks, guys. That one.